Thanks to the usual suspects of car review authorities, a lack of performance, comfort, reliability, and effort by the manufacturer are all factors that contribute to this worst rated cars list of 2022. If you don't like it, that's too bad. It's not my problem. In fairness to the Subaru Forester, there really isn't much wrong with the car mechanically. It's in the design where this compact SUV fails, both in terms of style and how the accessories and design work together. The powertrain is actually one of the better features of the Forester, but JD Power rated it as one of the worst compact SUVs for initial quality. JD Power. The Nissan Titan XD is the heavy duty version of the Nissan's base model, but reportedly doesn't live up to the claims made by the car manufacturer. The Titan XD is meant to have superior towing and hauling capacity, but Consumer Reports, take that with a grain of salt, claims this falls short. In fact, Consumer Reports named the Nissan Titan XD as its quote, worst overall quote, vehicle. Now, if you're only intending to make short trips with one person in the car, then the Chevy Spark is a great car. If you want to go further or bring more passengers, that's where the Chevy Spark runs into some problems. Due to its extremely compact size, the Spark is not a good family car, but that's probably not why you're buying it. Next, the Dodge Charger may be one of the most iconic names in American motoring, but the latest model isn't hitting the mark. The car has been described as large and powerful, but the Charger's downfall comes in its reliability. 2019 Chargers have been recalled twice already due to reliability issues. If there's one thing Honda has become known for over the years, it's bringing quality cars to the market. The Acura ILX seems to be the odd one out in the fleet, as the underwhelming performance and poor ride quality are clear from the moment you turn the key, or in this case, push the button. The Cherokee had a heavy push from Jeep's marketing department, but that hasn't made up for the fact that the SUV just doesn't deliver. It pains me to say that. While the Cherokee can be praised for trying to bring electricity to the SUV market, the subpar engine performance is a real downside. There is also, to some people, a confusing nine-speed automatic transmission which is underpinned by a weak engine. Toyota has a reputation in the car industry as one of the best, and it doesn't often find its vehicles being considered the worst of anything. However, despite all of the good things Toyota does, the CHR is considered to be one of its weakest vehicles among the fleet. The biggest problem people find with sitting behind the wheel is the fact that its powertrain leaves a lot to be desired. What's your desire? The Mitsubishi Eclipse falls short in its execution. That's the word in the street. When it comes to performance, the Eclipse is left eating the dust of its competitors. That must taste bad, making the poor gas mileage feel like a kick in the teeth. The Eclipse's plastic and cheap interior and high asking price make this an SUV to avoid in 2022 and makes it one of the worst rated cars on the market. Although the GMC Acadia is styled nicely and fits the luxury SUV class well, there are a few problems with this vehicle, otherwise it wouldn't be on this list. The biggest issue with the GMC Acadia is its reliability with the mostly US made parts not fitting together as well as they ought to. Reliability isn't the only issue, however, and there is questionably low gas mileage and a lack of cargo space for such a large vehicle. Just a couple of years ago, Consumer Reports essentially washed its hands of the Acura RDX by refusing to recommend it to its readers and followers. The main reason why CR couldn't bring itself to recommend the RDX was due to the SUV's reliability issues. With reliability issues already being a mark against the RDX, there were further issues with the handling, which leaves a lot to be desired. Furthermore, its robotic design has been proven to be quite divisive among car fans. So for over 40 grand, most people should be impressed by the RDX, but they are not. Nissan falls short of the competition thanks to its crossover SUV effort, the Pathfinder. Although there is plenty of room inside, it's what's under the hood that leaves some drivers feeling disappointed. Are you one? The Pathfinder ranks as the bottom of its class due to poor reaction when you hit the gas pedal. Although there are a few positives about the Cadillac ATS, there are some negatives that can't be overlooked. 
The car comes with sleek exterior styling, precise handling, and a range of engines to suit your power needs. That might be where the positives stop, however. And the interior of the ATS is ranked as one of the worst of the luxury car class. Not only does the interior lack class, the infotainment system is difficult to use, and gas mileage is piss poor. In the city, you are looking at 16 miles to the gallon with some Cadillac ATS models. Although the Land Rover Discovery has been given a makeover in recent years, it's what's under the hood that has most people complaining about this SUV. You might get a third row of seats in the redesigned Discovery, but you also get engine troubles that led to a recall in recent years. Compared to other vehicles in the luxury SUV range, the G-Class isn't as comfortable or safe as its competitors. The cash you have to splash to put a G-Class in your driveway might be better spent on other luxury SUVs like the Land Rover, Range Rover, or Porsche Cayenne. Although the classic Jeep Wrangler has many fans, its modern counterpart is not the legendary all-terrain vehicle of old. The Wrangler has been one of the worst valued vehicles in its category for several years, with the driving experience not being considered worth the asking price. Wranglers have been known for their uncomfortable ride, slow to react acceleration, and unreliability. Do you agree? Volvo has been providing quality vehicles for generations, and it's been known as one of the safest car manufacturers in the world. A great reputation. The XC90 has been around since 2002, and throughout the years, it has won plenty of admirers. Despite such a strong history, it has fallen on hard times with JD Power rating it the worst in its class. How dare you, JD Power. Mechanically speaking, there aren't many issues with the Nissan Armada, but there is one reason why it has found itself on this list. It's not an economical vehicle to drive, and it's considered to be one of the worst cars for gas mileage. This problem stems all the way back to 2015, and it remains an issue for the Armada in the modern day at just 14 miles to the gallon. It is too thirsty for gas to really make it a market leader in the SUV class, especially considering gas prices today. Toyota has been trying to redesign the Tacoma in recent years, but it continues failing to impress in every new change. One of the biggest concerns highlighted by Consumer Reports, again with a grain of salt, is the transmission issues with the Toyota Tacoma. Have you had any issues? Love to see your thoughts in the comment section below. Some of the worst features in the Q50 are the comfort, handling, and controls, all of which ought to be pretty bulletproof in a luxury car. In fact, the only thing that most critics agree the Affinity has going for it in its favor is the impressive acceleration. Everything else just misses the mark and the reliability also being put into question by reviewers. Despite Tesla's efforts to change how we drive, there are still plenty of kinks to iron out with its Model X. In fact, it's been ranked one of the worst and least reliable cars according to Consumer Reports, with the car putting style ahead of practicality. The GMC Yukon has been rated one of the worst cars in the market. Why? The main issue being an unreliable powertrain, which won't fill you with confidence when it's time to hit the gas. Not only is the drive a substandard one, according to drivers, but the interior design can feel plastic and hard, which is something that doesn't scream comfort. Next, the Cadillac Escalade. For a luxury SUV, you would expect the interior to be of a higher quality and to feel less dated than it looks. Considering this is an SUV, the cargo space isn't big enough, while reliability is questionable. Whenever you do take your Escalade into the shop, you're going to pay handsomely for it in terms of parts and repair costs. So be prepared, you've been warned. Don't kill the messenger. Subaru has reportedly made its claims that it intends to become an SUV brand in the future, which doesn't bode well for its sedan class. The WRX is Subaru's sportier version of the Impreza, but it seems to have fallen short of the mark of its more simple model. The WRX was not highly ranked by JD Power. Again, don't kill the messenger, I'm just reporting. Giving it the worst rating in initial quality among all compacts reviewed last year. Considering the Chevrolet Suburban is meant to be a family vehicle, the gas mileage is one big stumbling block for families. The huge SUV reportedly only gets 10 miles to the gallon, meaning the cost of most family road trips are going to be astronomical. 
Sure, the Suburban may be comfortable and some of its advanced features may make it stand out from the crowd, but that mileage is just hard to overlook. The Mini Cooper may be a cute compact, but for practicality and reliability issues, there may be better cars in the market, and there are. Across the board of this range of Minis, they seem to score low on reliability, with many owners reporting engine failure as a common problem. Another mark against Jeep, when the Compass was reviewed by Consumer Reports a couple years ago, the vehicle did not impress them. The publication voted it as one of the worst compact SUVs among its competitors, and the full review had almost nothing good to say about the Compass. Low ratings across the board were compounded by the fact that Jeep Compass had to be recalled because of issues with the brakes. I'm sure some of you will not agree with this list. If so, leave your grievances in the comments section below. Till next time, adios. One final note, if you are in the market for a new vehicle soon, great. Connect with your local dealership and price and test drive at least three different vehicles. A vehicle's strengths and weaknesses can only be discovered when you are behind the wheel. My reviews can be good, but you need to test drive these yourself. Visit quotes.everymandriver.com, select the make model in your zip code, and you'll get invoice pricing in your area on those vehicles. Shop smarter with price quotes at quotes.everymandriver.com. Thanks for watching. Please cl click subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time.